All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Wednesday, June 20th. So uh, we had some nice price action again today, uh, you know, basically from, well, you know, a little bit different scenario than yesterday. Yesterday and the last couple of days, we started on the lows. Today, we actually finished, uh, we started the day uh, in green, and, and we kind of finished that way. And um, again, really good outperformance in the queues. Uh, and the NASDAQ as, as well as IWM small cap. So I'm going to get to those in just a second. But uh, I, I always start with the S&P chart. Um, you know, a couple of things to point out here is, you know, there's decent supply up here. You know, this is where we stalled out last time in the S&P. And, um, you know, we're kind of coming, we're kind of right in between this decision area for the time being. Um do I trade the S&P? No. The only thing I use the S&P is, is really to hedge. Um, I think it is, you know, besides the last couple of days, still the most boring area of, of the market is, is the index. You know, really where we are finding some value is in individual names and, and in sectors. A lot of things going on in, in, in sectors too. Um, but we did, you know, I thought the top of value was, was a really good support line yesterday. Um, so we, you know, we're also in between these two moving averages. We're above the 20, we're below uh, the five. So again, the only thing that I really, I'm really looking at the S&P for is, you know, support resistance lines. You know, also if there's any hints if we're breaking down, you know, and anything like that. Um, you know, I say this from time to time, but I would rather have the S&P just just kind of do what it's doing, um, you know, like today up 20 basis points. That's fine uh, because I think that, you know, we do a great job at finding what names are moving. And as long as we're not capitulating, uh, I, you know, um, uh, we, we could definitely make money in this market. And that's how it's been all year long. All right. So that's that um, S&P futures up, up 20 basis points. NASDAQ, again, you know, continues to be, NASDAQ and small caps continue to be where the strength is. You had this nice looking bar here on the 20, touch off off the 20 period moving average and it moved higher. It uh, looks like we did hit a 52 week high there in the NASDAQ. Um, is it overbought? It's flirting with overbought territory, but, you know, it continues to move that way. Um, also small caps, uh, this one we'll just look at IWM. You know, just absolutely amazing at this point. So, you know, maybe a little bit of a gap higher there, which could be a little bit of a warning sign. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, it's it's also pretty overbought. Uh, you know, I talked about this, I think, yesterday with it getting overbought. It's a 76 RSI. So we have certainly gotten very overbought in in the uh, in the IWM. Um, so so what do you do with this at this point? You know, I, I mean, if I, I think you, you know, can, can continue to play this on the dips, but I would not be adding any risk uh, into anything, you know, especially if you're if you're in the IWM or, or or in some other small cap indices. I think you want to be taking profits here, and um, and yeah, and, and not really adding much risk. Uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit about what I did today, but mainly today was a great day to, for me to take profits and just to kind of reset, let things cool off a little bit, uh, because some of the areas that I'm in are pretty jacked. You know, I'm not in a lot of to be honest, I'm not in a lot of large cap S&P names. You know, I'm in a little bit more, I don't want to call them straight out speculative, but just things that have momentum to them. And, you know, there's certain sectors in, in the uh, S&P 500 that continue to not have any momentum at all um, and to continue to kind of look at, you know, possibly like some of the rest of the world, which is, um, which is pretty ugly and, and a scary place right now. So that's another reason, you know, um, I, I always kind of talk about the negative in these videos, and it's not because I'm a pessimist. You know, I just very much, I, I really like what Paul Tudor Jones has to say. If you ever read, you know, any any books where he's quoted, I think Market Wizards is, is a great one. If I'm misquoting that, I apologize, but I think it's called Market Wizards, where, um, you know, they have different interviews from famous, famous traders, famous investors. And, you know, one of the things that he says is, you know, every night when, when he finishes for the day or when he's looking at his book, he assumes that every position that he's holding is wrong, right? He's always worried about the downside instead of the upside, right? And as a trader, uh, you know, if you're an experienced trader, that's to me what you should be doing as well. Always worried about your downside risk. The potential is, is a whole nother thing. And if you're trading at options, you're getting plenty of potential to the upside. But you always have to be worried about your book. Are positions wrong? Are things going to start rolling over? Because that can hurt sometimes a lot more 
than when the market is going up. So, um, you know, so this is the good right now, NASDAQ and, and, um, and small caps, something that has been continued to be the trend since we broke out here. It really hasn't looked back at all. Uh, but yeah, you know, a little extended. So, you know, I'll continue to be um, what I've said before and um, highly selective um, into some into some areas. So, you know, number one trade uh, for the last couple of days, you know, was box. Uh, box gave us a really good indication yesterday. I talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video. You got the nice MACD crossover. And um, they were buying into the weakness yesterday. So that really gave us some good insight. They do have uh, a presentation. They just had a shareholders presentation or stockholders presentation that's over with. I don't think the stock really moved on that. But um, you could see from today's option activity, uh, you know, how many times they came into box again. So that's great. They're continuing to buy it. When they're doing that, I want to I want to be long. You know, I think I hit one target today. In, um, in box and, and, and kept the, left, the the remaining on. Remember I added, uh, remember what I did here in this trade, I bought back on last Thursday, I think which is back here and uh, took big targets on this one. And then I rolled my July position to August um, and then even added to the August position a little bit yesterday. And uh, that paid off really well. Um, then, you know, so I wanted to talk about that and the, and the call activity in that one because it was pretty awesome today, the amount of calls that they were purchasing today in box. And like I said, they bought them yesterday too. Um, healthcare, really that is the, um, I think caught a lot of people's attention today. And when I, when I talk about healthcare, it's again, it's, it's large cap uh, healthcare. Small cap healthcare has been acting beautifully. So let's just go over this just for two minutes and then I'll talk about some individual movers. But this is IBB, much different. This is what I call large cap because it's market cap weighted. So your Regeneron, which had a great day today, your Biogen, your Celgene, your Gilead, those are your top weights. Amgen are, are your top names in this. But those have not been the ones that have been moving this year. Um, so now they're actually starting to move. You know, next on the list. So again, very sideways looking chart. It has, you know, it had a great day today. Um, this is uh, an area that we did see call buying back around the 200 day moving average in IBB a couple times. And it uh, looks like those call buyers are getting rewarded. Um, XBI prettier breakout, right? So next we'll, we'll go to the, to the XBI. So what is the difference between XBI and IBB? XBI is equally weighted. Uh, so it's got the same names that I mentioned, you know, the Celgene, the Regeneron, the, the Biogen, but everything is equally weighted and it's got small caps in there too. So it is not, so again, you have to know what the difference is. If you're going to, if you're going to invest in these things, there's some really big differences. So it doesn't mean it's a small cap ETF. It just means the small caps get the same weights as the large caps, right? And notice the difference. It's breaking out. Real nice breakout of that uh, bull flag too. I would call this a, a, a little bit of a flag or congestion period and uh, moving out. But if you look at small caps, again, which I continue to to um, to pound my fist into the desk to get people to pay attention to this, um, PSCH, look at the performance in the small caps. So again, IBB, mostly large caps. It's market cap weighted. XBI, a combination of small caps and large caps. PSCH, it's even called healthcare, not even biotech, is up almost 33% year to date. So again, I point this out because there is a major difference in the, one of the biggest differences I've ever seen within a sector between small cap and large cap. So, you know, I, I think some people, um, you know, and I'm not criticizing anybody, but they're, they're just trained to just to look at the same companies over and over. It's just like in the S&P, right? There's so many companies, big companies in the S&P that are not moving. And people want them to move, but these other names are doing a hell of a job. Um, you know, and this is your ABMD, right? This is your your QDEL. Um, you know, all all of these smaller names, and and a lot of them are pretty high priced. But there, there's a whole handful of these that people, um, you know, traders just do not have their eyes on. Uh, they have their eyes on the bigger cap names, but but regardless. Um, if you also look at the XLV, which is also looking pretty interesting, perhaps some of those large caps are, are starting to to wake up a little bit. Um, I think this is starting to set up here in the XLV. I do like this ETF to kind of play for option activity because the um, 
the options are very cheap uh, versus you know the two other ETFs that, that I mentioned. But again, um, some real nice performance. So I wanted to spend some time. You know, one name that I've been long is Regeneron. Not a big position. You know, I put a Regeneron position in. Whenever I trade a counter trend trade, you know, basically against the grain, um, against the the you know this name has been in a downward trend for a while but has come to life here so whenever i put on a counter trend trade it's always going to be smaller than usual than than a trend trade uh, because it's riskier in my opinion you're going way against the um you're going against the trade and i like to stick with the trend or sorry you're going against the grain you're going against the trend this one now is starting to work really well so i have a call spread on um in this one so nice nice move there um, a few other trades to kind of point out. A lot of option activity today. Um, just a lot of things. There were some Tesla calls that were bought today. I don't know why I start with that one. I think pretty speculative. But uh, some Tesla calls uh, were bought into today's congestion area. Um, this acted pretty well. Um, you know, so so a move up here out of this congestion zone. Um, a couple of traders caught this in the room today. Very nicely done. And uh, you're know, doing doing pretty well. Uh, nice little flag at the end of the day. We'll see how that turns out for tomorrow. Um, a few other names to go through. Horton, which did not have a great reaction today. There were some calls bought right off the uh, the beginning of the day, but fizzled. And I saw this in a few different charts today. You know, um, not the best looking candle. We'll kind of see if this. The main thing to watch, I think, you know, whenever there's a really nasty candle like this, which is what I'm calling it, is to watch the price above the, the five period exponential moving average. Is it could have these crazy, crazy candles as long as it stays above here. If it starts to have a reversal bar and you get a close maybe below here, then maybe you go ahead and exit. But I'm still long. I, you know, and again, this is a good testament to having uh, targets out in your option trades because I was able to take a target this morning, which was uh, which was very nice same thing in Teva today uh, which we did see some more call buying in this one uh, this is one that I've been long and talking about for a while now um, since this broke out I've taken targets in this one but it continues to go higher I still think Teva can continue to move higher here um, you know it's been in such a downtrend it's just retracing uh, we're seeing that in a couple other names like ENDP which I'm still long as well you know moving very well um, out of that base. So again, pace, I think, to look at the long-term chart. This was a $96 stock. And then we're talking about a $9 stock right now. So, you know, something that I want to hold for a little bit longer and, and, and let ride. Um, other charts, there was a, a decent amount of, of buying today in energy names besides healthcare, which I talked about, and, um, and biotechs. Um, there were some Devon calls. Remember Devon from months ago? This was a huge winner um, in the trading room and a, and a huge winner for me um, with this big move here. Uh, you know, I, I even got long this before it got to the 200-day moving average um, and then took targets, you know, very close to this VPOC. Um, but it looks like it's edging back up and, and there's some more call buying uh, that's been taking place um, in this name. Also, I think Whiting saw some calls today as well. So um, nice to see some some buyers back into a different, you know, call buyers into a different space. Um, PXD also saw a little bit of calls too. Um, that one I did not take. You know, again, I don't want to load up in a bunch of energy names, but maybe have exposure to uh, one or two. Also, uh, a name that I've mentioned and I think I put out on Twitter last night, RRC, did take out one of these VPOCs, so we'll have to see how it reacts. But besides that being there, um, I do very much like the chart of range resources. A few other names to talk about from today's option activity. Um, NEPT, more calls than that one. I think that one acts pretty well. I did not take that one. A little bit of U.S. Steel call buying today as well. I think that name reacted pretty well. Um, Boston Scientific, um, I took this trade today for kind of for a day trade. Um, I took a little bit of profits in it. But remember, this was a name that um, had some speculation about buying. And then um, who was it? Who, who was the other uh, company that came out and said that uh, I forget the I forget the rumor. Uh, but they came out and said that they are not there. There's no such no such trade going on or no such deal going out with. I apologize. I can't remember who it was. Was it Sanofi? No, maybe not. Um, 
but in, in any event, somebody came in and bought a little bit more calls today in that. So maybe maybe where there's smoke, there's fire. We'll see. Astra, a little bit of, I mean, these are really small orders in, Ast in AstraZeneca, AZN. They're only about 70,000, but somebody's been buying AstraZeneca calls for the last three days. Keep an eye on that one as well. Chart doesn't look great. I think it's, but it's got to get, a, you know, I think it's got to get back above the 50-day moving average. So I think, um, you know, fairly interesting. Um, what seems to be quiet again is the industrials. Uh, you know, I, I, that's one of the things that I would be looking for in the next couple of days is, is maybe to see if um, some call buyers come into into some industrial names, which I know you know are tariff sensitive. Um, but at some point, people are going to get over it and start to buy things like Boeing again and Caterpillar. Um, so I would rather you know just kind of watch out for it um, rather than not fade it. Um, so that's what I would be watching there. Um, I feel like there's a couple other trades. There's some Celgene. I think I don't think Celgene is ready yet, but uh, I would keep, also keep an eye on Celgene in that space. Um, finally, just just a couple other things, right? Um, you know, so going back to this IWM chart, I always see people on Twitter once they see something go up a lot, they want to short it. Um, so I don't want to short IWM. I just want to take targets if you're long some of these things because sometimes it'll burn off overbought levels and continue to go higher. So it's not that I want to fade uh, IWM. I don't want to fade something that's strong. Um, but you just want to take targets and just be cognizant that, it, that it's overbought at this point. Um, let me just go over just a couple other charts here that um, are going to depress you a little bit. But anything in emerging markets, you know, I went through this last night. EWI, I mean, some of this stuff, and I think it's good to just have this in the back of your mind that there is a lot of things breaking down globally. So this is South Korea. Um, I've already brought up the chart of, of um, EEM, which is broken. You know, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think of some other charts. EWT, Taiwan, broken down below the, when I say broken, I mean below the 200 day moving average. Um, what else? EWH, which I believe is the strongest out of, you know, the emerging markets, Hong Kong, uh, now broken below the 200-day moving average. ASHR, a mess, way below the 200-day moving average. Um, EPI, India, below the way below the 200-day moving average. Then if you go over to Latin America, you could start with ILF, way broken. You know, a lot of this is, is Brazil, which was up yesterday, but back down today, so wasn't able to maintain the bid. Then if, if you go into either the smaller emerging markets like Peru, below the 200-day moving average, Chile, below the 200-day moving average. Um, if you go over to Europe, um, where do I want to start here? FEZ, below the 200-day moving average. Uh, there was a trade, there was a seller in this today, EWO, uh, this is Austria, below the 200-day moving average. Germany, below the 200-day moving average. Now, again, currency has an effect here. All these ETFs that I'm having are basically short the U.S. dollar. There, there is a currency effect here. But I'm telling you, this stuff does not look pretty good. Maybe one of the better ones, I was going to look at EWU. That's also, that's the U.K., also below the 200-day moving average. Um, yeah, so, you know, all of these areas globally, I can't find very many countries, regions uh, that are above the 200-day moving average anymore. So um, this, I think, why I bring this up to you, because I think a lot of retail investors are only focused on U.S. markets. And true, we, we, you know, we, we are one of the best economies in, in the world and the, and the largest right now. But at some point... Um, so, and I've said this before in other videos, something has to give, and I think you should be taking profits on day. Again, this video is completely for information purposes only, but on days like this, you know, you could see what I did, um, just so I'm, I'm not preaching. Right? I'm taking profits. I'm taking profits in just about a, in a lot of different things. Um, today. So it looks like I forgot to put add a couple trades in here. Um, yeah, so I'm busy taking targets. I want to go more into cash. 
Um, and we'll see where things goes. Keep in mind as well, a lot of what I think is happening in some of these tech names is, you know, is company buyback plans are providing the bid, you know, especially to, to this price action yesterday. In my opinion, this is, this is, has a lot to do. Now, I don't know 100% for sure, but, you know, we heard in all those earnings quarters and all those earnings reports from last, uh, from, from last, from when all the big companies reported that they were all increasing their buyback plans. Remember, in case you don't know what that means, basically what they're doing is going out in the open market and purchasing shares. They give the order to one of their, uh, you know, to a broker and the broker will execute the order most likely over the day. Um, and they'll just buy like the, it's called putting it in a machine. They'll buy VWAP, uh, you know, over, over the day, uh, volume weighted average price. They'll buy more in the beginning of the day, less in the middle of the day. You know, just that's, it's the volume profile of every stock. And at the end of the day, so in about a week or so, you're going to get to a lot of quiet periods where the company buyback machines are going to be off. It'll be really interesting to say to see what happens with a lot of these names that there's an underlying bid in right now once those once we get back into quiet periods, which, you know, the next earnings cycle is mid, you know, starts mid uh, July. So, you know, give it a couple weeks and, you know, week to two weeks, depending on what company reports and those buyback. Uh, plans are going to be in closed window periods. So I think you're going to see a little bit of a different market once those buyback machines and once that underlying bid to the market is, is not there anymore. So um, again, I come out with, um, you know, a, a great day, a great day to trade, but a little bit cautious. And, and that's why I'm taking targets and continuing to be very selective. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.